G'day and welcome to another episode of Barbecue. Hands on. Today we've gone old school. We're going back to the Weber charcoal cooker. We're going to cook a rump cap, otherwise known as a picanha, if you're familiar <coughs> with your Brazilian barbecue. I am not cooking it in the tradition, br traditional Brazilian way. Uh, if you want that, there's a hundred videos on YouTube, you go watch those. Today you're going to see my way, of which I was taught in the school of smoke, how to cook. Back in 2018, I did a barbecue course at the School of Smoke. Google it, you'll find it if you want to uh, chase, chase it up. In that course, we cooked a rump cap, otherwise known as a picanha roast, and it was amazing. Since then, I've cooked this piece uh, at least half a dozen, maybe even a dozen times, and it's never failed. It's one of the easiest cooks, and it's just fantastic. So, what normally happens when you get this piece from the butcher, is that it hasn't been dressed. Uh, I'll just quickly open it up, it shows. Normally, the bottom is covered in blue skin and you'll need to use your filleting knife to remove all the blue skin. I bought this piece from uh, Meat at Billy's, which is an absolute excellent butcher, and they fully dress the cut for you. So there's pretty much no work to do on this one. Um, so as there's no work to do, I will do no work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use this bull dust from Wild Smoke Rub. I've used a couple of different rubs and this is my favorite for this particular cut. So did you want to pour an old yeah. rub? There we go. The meat's now been rubbed. We'll take it downstairs, we'll make sure our barbecue's to heat, we'll put a wireless internal meat thermometer into the meat. When it hits 50 degrees C, we'll know it's rare and cooked. We'll then pull it out, put it on, uh, put rest it for about 30 minutes, and then the magic happens. So keep, stay tuned. And here we are. Our barbies to temperature, 150 degrees is what we're after. If we look, look at all that charcoal is burning up. We don't want it to be too hot, we don't want it to be too cold, and we definitely need the fire to keep going. So what I do, is I half light the fuel there, I put some extra fuel on the other side, so it'll just burn across. Remembering that you need smoke, because we're smoking, I've got some beautiful pieces of cherry wood here, which I cut up earlier. What we do is we'll just pop them in. Go. Then we get our meat. You always put the meat on the other side from the heat, because we're not radiant cooking, we're convection cooking. And I know other people do it other ways, but I like to put it fat side up. In my head, the fat's bathing the meat as it's cooking. So there it is. Always have your bottom grill, well, always, again, this is all personal preference. Bottom vent maximum open, top vent maximum open, and put your exit holes above the meat, so the air comes in from the top, the heat, and everything gets to go out. To regulate your temperature, I like to adjust the bottom gauge only, because you want to get all that old smoke and all the old air out, because you don't, if it stays in there, it can become acrid and too bitter. So regulate your heat by adjusting how much air comes in, not how much air goes out, is my way. Oops, forgot. We've got to put the meat probe in. Sun's over there. Come on, man. Alrighty. So remember, we're going in. You want to get it right into the middle of the meat. Push. Push. There we go. Done. Yeah, look, that's good enough for me. Okay. And so. There it is. 
We're starting at five degrees. Our mission is over at 50 degrees. I thought you said 60. We've already got smoke coming out. Let's go and um, prepare some potatoes. Earlier you said 60. I did not say 60. I never said 60. 50 is rare for me to eat. Not 60. I heard 60. So the way I like to do my potatoes is, these are just standard white ones, I don't know, whatever they're called, washed, something, Baked, peeled, cut twice, well, cut three times I suppose, half and half again, into boiling water for about 10-20 minutes, get them all a little bit soft and, um, and squidgy on the outside, drain, sit for about you know, three or four minutes, put them back in the pot without the water, bash them around a bit, add um, well oil of your choice, butter, olive oil, whatever, herbs, I like thyme and rosemary, a bit of salt, and then chuck them in an oven, uh, fan for southern for 30, 40, 50 minutes, depending on how keen you are for the crunchies, and you build uh, some absolutely fantastic potatoes. So that's what we're doing, our side today will be potatoes and, just one second, corn, a couple of ears of corn, nothing fancy just straight just leave them in the husk chuck them in with your slow cook and an hour hour and a half later they're absolutely to die for roll them in a bit of butter a bit of salt can't go wrong all right turns out we've had a change of heart we're going to cut them again And there you go, we've already put a little bit of salt in that water. We'll leave them in there for about 20 minutes and then I'll show you what happens next. The internal temperature now says it's 52 degrees, which is exactly where we want it, just slightly over rare. Look at that. Look at that. That's an absolute cracker. What I do now, I'll just move our corn. What I do now, because as we all know, colour is flavour, look at that, is I position the meat directly over the coals and they effectively start a fat fire. The fat will render off the top of this meat down onto the coals and start to burn and just you watch, you watch, watch, watch. Definitely burn this stuff with your hands over it. Look, see, so there we go, and just like that. I'm going to back away. Just behind the pump. So I do that for about a minute maximum. There we go. 
go. Alrighty. Now you come back and have a look at that and just see the difference. That beautiful colour. Alrighty. So now. We're resting it for 30 minutes, I suppose. That's correct. We'll just wrap the meat. So our meat's been resting now for 30 minutes. I'll be honest, the recipe actually calls for you to cut it into one and a half centimetre thick slices, sear it on a uh, super hot cast iron plate, and then eat it that way. But to date, it has always been too hard to resist just eating it at this stage. We'll go into that a little bit later. The key is to cut across the grain. You don't want to cut with the grain. So we'll do an experimental cut. And the best way to describe if you're across the grain is that you're looking at a web as opposed to lines. See, that's mostly lines. I don't think I'm across the grain there just yet. Whereas that one is much better. See how we're across the, see how it's a web there and it's lines there? Let's just have another slice there. Look at that. There we go. See, so what I normally do, I'll be honest, is at this point in time, I just eat these. Mm. And they're so incredibly juicy. And just so incredibly full of taste and flavor. The smoke, the rub, the fat, the meat. But tonight's the night. We're gonna do some two thick cut steaks. I've got the Barbie downstairs heating up right now, we'll give it a crack. So I reckon it's about reasonable. Also, you're just gonna um, like put the Oh, there we on. go. And see, that is perfectly across the grain. Now I could have put a cast iron grill on my Weber charcoal um, barbie, but then I would have needed to put a whole bunch more charcoal on there to get the temperature I needed. So I've just come back to the faithful, trusty Weber family because I can just turn on the gas and make it hot. Hey, that's why gas exists. So what we're going to do is... I've had this plate getting hot for the last 10 or 15 minutes. It is nuclear hot. That's about 15 to 30 seconds. Hmm. Yeah, look. It's not bad. But I think I actually prefer the thin slices of the um, meat without the sear. Okie dokie, I'll plate up a plate with our potatoes and our corn and then we'll sit down and assess everything. Okay, we'll be right back. All right. So here it is, finished product. These potatoes, beautiful, crunchy, soft. Try some, have a crack. Mmm, thyme, rosemary, salt. Beautiful, beautiful. And as you can see, the really, really thin pieces. There you go, well, oops. Now you jump in, have a crack. <laughs> mm. I think the thin pieces are um, are actually superior to the thick steak, um, just because th that's how I prefer it. But you know, everybody have your own thing. Uh, mm, mm. It is just so nice. And then finally. The corn that's been slow cooking in the husk for the last, gee, um, what, hour and a half, almost two hours. No, I'd say about an hour and then we kept mm. it in the husk for about half. Mm. So about an hour and a half. It's not as cooked as it normally is. Normally, um, because I've done corn in the husk often, but today it just didn't turn out too well, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, I totally recommend it. You should give it a good go. Mm. Well, look, um, rump cap. It absolutely tastes divine. You don't have to have it this rare. Remember, your internal meat thermometer will tell you the temperature. Um, I always pull it off at 50, 51, 52. 
because I just love it bleeding. I love it rare. I love it red. The, the flavor, the juice. But you can run it all the way however you want. So what do you reckon, mate? We're just going to finish this now? Yeah, it's really good. All right, then. Okay, well, look, have a good one, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the cook. See you later.